All right. Well, this is being recorded as well. So if we have a couple uh, people just now joining or joining a little bit late, that's fine. We can get you the recording and, and uh, you can catch up. But I want to make the best use of this time. So I just want to welcome everybody for uh, to this webinar and thank you all for joining. Uh, we have a few different organizations represented here today and a few different panelists. Uh, and so I just want to introduce who you'll be seeing the faces of and who will be talking today, as well as go over the agenda of what to expect for the next hour. So uh, who we have on the line today is uh, we have Amy Iceman, who is the Chief Research and Digital Experience Officer at MSU Federal Credit Union. Uh, we also have Dan Stelmach from Changed. He's the co-founder. Uh, we also have Scott Brown, who is the VP of Growth at Larky. And last, but and most certainly at least, is myself, Jordan Dorito from Q2. Uh, and I will explain a little bit about who Q2, we're a digital banking platform uh, and, and its relevance here in this conversation. But today, what we plan on talking about over the next uh, 57 minutes now is uh, uh, we're going to go over starting at number two. Actually, we're going to start with with Larky and who they are, what they do, uh, and how they help financial institutions engage with their account holders, specifically with the Change Solution. Which brings us to Bob. We're going to meet Bob, who is uh, a one of those typical account holders who interacts with their financial institution in a number of ways, and uh, how Larky can help with with that interaction with Bob. Uh, then we're going to bring in uh, the Changed. Uh, application and talk a little bit about how Bob would interact with change to uh, help pay down debt and what that looks like. And then we're going to bring in uh, the real world scenarios from MSU Federal Credit Union and how uh, Amy's going to give us some scenarios of how she used Larky, Changed, uh, and what that meant for both their credit union and the account holders who use it. Uh, and then we're going to definitely spend some time uh, going through Q&A. We want to leave some time at the end. Uh, a quick housekeeping is, you know, welcome to ask questions throughout uh, using the Q&A function in Zoom. However, we will probably hold those until the very end, um, depending on, you know, how that how much how this goes timing wise. Uh, so if you ask the question, we might just kind of save it till the end unless, unless it's like super relevant and we can we can have it conversational. We'll just kind of see how this goes. Um, but first, going back to uh, who I am. So I, I am the uh, director of alliances at Q2 and a little bit about who Q2 is in case you're not aware, we are a digital banking platform serving over 450 banks and credit unions across the United States for both or actually consumer SMB and large corporate. Um, the reason this is relevant for this discussion is, is what we do here at Q2 is we built this uh, program we call Innovation Studio, which is a way for partners like Larky and Changed to uh, integrate easily with our digital banking platform for the benefit of all of the customers who use Q2. Uh, and what that means is it, it usually reduces, actually not usually, it guarantees to reduce the integration time and cost. So a normal project uh, on your own might be you know, 12 to 18 months. We can do it in usually two weeks because we've already worked with these partners to build an integration and can simply just turn it on. Um, and along with the partners you're gonna hear from today, we have lots of other integrations uh, that are part of our online catalog, which is really what, that, um, what you're seeing there in that screenshot. But we're not here to talk about all the other partners. We're here to talk about Larky and Changed and what they did for MSU, uh, FCU. And so, uh, with that, I want to turn this over to Scott to, to start talking a little bit of, uh, about Larky and kind of kick this whole thing off. All right. Thanks, Jordan. And, and thanks to Q2 for coordinating our time today. This is going to be a fun conversation. So, so who is Larky? So our philosophy is helping financial institutions tap into engaging communication using the digital, using the digital banking channel as that method of, of communication. The whole idea is you have account holders that are out there living their lives, hate to break it to you, but not always thinking about their bank or credit union. And so the challenge becomes, how do you help them? How do you uh, share all the great initiatives, all the great value that you provide as a financial institution to your audience when people are disconnected and when they're not in branch, when they're not in the digital ecosystem, how do you proactively reach out and get your message across? And, and that's what we do. We have uh, integration with digital banking providers to, again, 
turn that digital banking channel into a communication channel. And so um, the, the highlights that you see on your screen are some of the primary use cases that we help uh, financial institutions overcome. So think about things like increasing deposits. How do you how do you attract and retain the deposits that you have, bring in new money to the financial institution when, again, people are distracted and not always paying attention? How do you let them know about the great rate on, on your uh, CD promo or a high yield savings account that you have to offer? How do you mitigate fraud? How do you stop fraud in real time by having a communication channel that people pay attention to? How do you reduce inbound call volume, protect the financial institution's funds, and most importantly, let your uh, members and customers know that your financial institution is safe and sound. Um, again, you need a communication channel to do that. Think about, um, as we look at, at ways to increase revenue and to drive income, think about bringing your card top of wallet and just how challenging that can be in this competitive landscape that we're in. Uh, we provide a channel to help you bring your card top of wallet and remind your, uh, your audience of why, uh, why they should be swiping your debit and credit cards. Uh, we'll skip one for one minute because that's really the reason why we're here. The last thing I'll touch on is uh, think about lending opportunities. And again, increasingly competitive marketplace. Your audience has people and financial institutions coming at them from all different angles. How do you share your value proposition and let your audience know that doing the auto loan or the mortgage or the HELOC with you is the easy is the easy move and, and the right move for them in their financial lives? Lastly, um, think about new product adoption. Think about the way that you communicate value to your audience. How do you let the, the account holders know all the great things that you work so hard on implementing, like change and like other innovation studio solutions? How do you help your audience uh, in their financial wellness and their financial well-being? Again, adding that additional value to their financial institution relationship. How do you get that message front and center? And, and so we'll talk about how we, again, tap into the digital channel to do just that. All right, let's look at an account holder. And so we'll meet Bob. Uh, Bob is going to be your standard account holder that I bet many of you have. I bet a lot of you have Bob's at your institution. So there's Bob. L let's talk about some of his financial institution relationships. So here's what Bob says. Bob says, my checking and savings account at, are at your institution. Okay, that's great. Direct deposit comes in every two weeks. Cool, we've got some level of stickiness, right? Bob goes on to say, I pay my Amex bill out of my checking account and I mostly use that Amex card for my day-to-day -day spending. Not so great. I have a sweet high interest savings account at Ally Bank. Good job, Bob. Bob says my auto loan is through Chase Bank and hey, not to brag, but I have a HELOC from Wells Fargo as well. So what does that tell us? That tells us that there is an opportunity and it's not always a great opportunity. That opportunity could very quickly become a risk if we don't stay on top of that. And so let's take a look at Bob. Let's look at how Bob interacts with the world. And quite frankly, this is the way that I interact with those that I do business with. This is likely how many of you also go through the world and we pay attention to our phones when they light up and, and Bob is no different. So picture Bob going about his daily life and with his sweet sweater vest on, by the way, he's looking slick. And so Bob gets this notification from Chase. Chase lights up the phone. Attention breaks when our phones light up. We look at it. It's just the way our brains are wired, and Bob is no different. So Bob sees this. Uh, look at this offer from Amex. Amex is now front and center in his mind, and they're talking about a high-yield savings account directly to Bob's phone. Now Bob is going on with his day, maybe the next day, going through life. Um, gets another, can we go back real quick? Gets another notification from uh, from Ally Bank, from a competitive financial institution, also talking about a high yield savings account. So the idea here is that, quite frankly, if you're not tapping into this channel, others are, and they're they're always trying to eat the community financial institution's lunch. And so, um, so Bob gets the offer from Ally. Again, he looks at it, phone lights up, pays attention. Um, let's see what's next. All right, so this is cool. So hey, MSUFCU says, well, let's let's not let Ally Bank and Amex have all the fun. So Bob sees this notification from MSUFCU, and he says, I love my credit union. I just forgot about them until now, and and that's probably very true for many of your members and customers. Again, don't kill the messenger, but they're probably not always thinking about you. But Bob, MSUFCU was successful in getting Bob's attention, and so now Bob sees this notification. Great rates are back, earn up to 4.5% with a share certificate special from MSUFCU. Tap here to get started. 
And so MSUFCU is getting Bob's attention in a really relevant way. They're tapping into the digital channel that people pay attention to. And if we put our marketing hats on, that call to action, that tap here to get started, they're also giving Bob a really, really easy way to engage with the credit union. All right, so Amy, let's talk about these results because you guys did an amazing job. And <laughs> as proud of MSUFCU, uh, as proud of them as we are, this is not an uncommon situation for banks and credit unions to be in the situation where you are after liquidity and you're trying to bring in deposits. I think many financial institutions are in a very similar place. And so MSUFCU was trying to bring in deposits and they did that through a CD promotion. They used both traditional marketing channels being email and direct mail, and then also digital communication being Larky's push notifications. Um, Amy, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of touch on the, the results in a minute, but is there anything that you want to add or anything that you could say about, I mean, I don't know, brag for a minute, maybe? What do you think about the, the results of, of your efforts here? Sure. I'm always happy to brag a little bit. I, yeah. I will just say what has always been really valuable to me, and I, I would venture to say for almost any FI, is having additional channels is really meeting the member at the right time where they are. So we always know that members are going to go through the process that makes them feel most comfortable. And adding push has allowed us to really capture that momentum as the member is in those action moments and then couple it with things we are already doing in our marketing space and drive that even further. Um, it is hard to kind of cut through the clutter. There used to be an old marketing rule that someone had to see your message seven times before they did anything. We're like well into the 20 times before action is taken. But when you can really tap into a member you already have who's already engaged with you and get them to take that next action, you're cutting through all of that clutter for them a lot faster. Um, I think that's where Larky really thrives um, on top of being able to really customize geolocation and list and time of day and importance. There's just a lot of factors that go into making sure that message really lands. So it's it's been a great experience, but um, we've seen a lot of really engaging results. And that is what I'm always after. Yeah, it, I, thanks, Amy. I mean, yeah, um, definitely pat yourselves on the back because you guys did a great job. But I think every financial institution, uh, big and small, needs to embrace this channel of digital communication because like you said, it's about getting in front of the audience in a relevant way by giving them something that helps them that's of value and then also taking it to the next level and making it easy for them to engage. And so what MSUFCU did is they were after, certainly there's a there's a self-serving notion they're trying to accomplish the credit union's goals and initiatives, but there's also a means of helping their members in their case have a, a better financial product that's going to help them make money and save money. And so when you look at the results here, and you see 16% of the results were driven by traditional channels. Those traditional channels are costly, and they take a lot of time to do. For email, you have to create an email campaign with a bunch of copy, get a bunch of bounce backs and out of offices. And then with direct mail, well, there's the expense of postage, mailing, printing, design work. It takes time. And so in this one example, MSUFCU generated 84% of the results through this digital channel, through Larky push notification, resulted in over $3 million in, in CD balances and at a fraction of the work. So let, let's let's keep that in mind as we look at how do we help our audience, how do we help our account holders really engage with us, but also help them in their financial lives. And so let's look at another example here. So th this is really cool. So I, one thing that I would want to point out, as Bob's going through life and he's getting his notifications from Amex and Chase and from everywhere else, they're very transactional in nature. They're very black and white, in and out, kind of like, I hate to say it, but he's sort of just using the financial institution. And also, um, to Bob's detriment, he's not getting that much out of it. He's not getting a ton of value, right? He's just in and out, basically. And so what Bob says, he, he gets this notification from MSUFCU. And here we're not necessarily talking about marketing a specific product. We're not talking about selling him something or necessarily getting him to do something more with us, but rather help Bob in his financial life. And so he gets this notification, do debt differently, put more money back in your wallet, manage your savings and minimize your debt with change. Again, that same call to action, that same frictionless way to take, uh, take us up on the next step in that journey, that tap to get started. And so Bob's saying, I manage all my debt with these financial institutions, but now my community, my community credit union is offering me an action plan. And so this is how we take this form of communication and break through one, the noise, 
And two, just the transactional nature where we're not creating the utmost value, which is sort of commoditizing the thing we do and really transform that into something that's of value for the account holder. So, and Dan, Dan that, that's your cue, man. I mean, this is really <laughs> where change, this is where change comes in. So Larky gets Bob's attention. Larky breaks through the noise. He pays attention to his phone. And then this is where you bring an additional value through, through your solution. Yeah, thanks, Scott. So let's let's talk about journey. I'm going to start off with Bob's uh, fancy sweater vest that he probably used his Amex card to to purchase it, or maybe even a buy now pay later because you know sweater vests are expensive these days, and uh, they want to distribute those costs over time. Uh, but essentially, Bob in itself, just like any average person, and if you've read anything about the, the news and debt in recent news, like debt in general for consumers are at its highest point it's ever been, right? So through this journey of Bob consuming debt, buying the products he wants, maybe taking on debt for him, mortgages, unexpected expenses, student loans or whatnot, we really kind of identify where Bob is and how he looks at his debt in, in itself. So when you, when you look at debt as a consumer, it's usually a very transactional relationship. You have a portal to make payments, you make that payment, you leave. Um, and that's what kind of leads a very dysfunctional relationship with debt in itself, but also uh, a dysfunctional relationship with the member and the credit union as well. So then this journey, we send a push notification to no notify Bob that, hey, we have a tool that helps you better manage that debt and bring everything all in one place to really create a hub for the financial institution for Bob to manage all of their loans and bring in all of those Chase and Ally Bank offers and really kind of manage those all in one place, but under the umbrella of your financial institution, in this case for MSU FCU. And before I jump in and dive a little bit more about our platform, I kind of want to share some results in regards to our, our Larky campaigns, as well as what we've seen with the Change platform. So Amy, we'd love to have you share some feedback, uh, because these are both uh, case studies we've ran with both of these partners that MSU actually utilize. So uh, please share us uh, what you've learned so far. For sure. I will just say from a global standpoint, just being on this call, a it's awesome to get to be here, but to get to relive some of it has been very cool. Um, but it's also just a representation of the partnerships that we've built and the effort that both teams have put into making this successful. So in Larky for helping us create that journey and getting their attention, but really for change and helping us change the way that our members are engaging with their debt and helping position us as a partner. Um, we've been very big on financial education from day one. It's something we've always really believed in, but being able to help members action that and have trackability and see that success is a different way that we're showing up for our members. And it's become a very important part of our matrix um, in building that. And we've seen a lot of really great success, not only in members engaging with us more regularly, but also in the way that they're managing their money. And for any FI, that's really the long-term goal, right? Is like we're changing habits from what they used to do to a more financially healthy management plan, um, but also that they then see us as a partner longer term rather than just one of those accounts that they're managing. So we've seen a lot of really great success. We've got several thousand members participating with Changed, um, but also you guys have really showed up as partners for us in creating this journey. And I always look for that first because that is a big change. That's a big decision maker for me is like, who do I want to spend time on, spend time with on changing the things that we need to for our members? And I would say both of you have done that very well. Awesome, Amy. Thank you for sharing that. So just a few stats in regards to both of the partnerships and some campaigns that we've ran through Larky. So uh, based off a few push notification campaigns that we've ran, we've seen a 300% increase compared to any other uh, product offered through that channel uh, with the changed offer. So being that 90% of the members that are walking through your doors, logging into your online banking portals, and just interacting with you have carry and manage that. And it's usually this dark gray cloud where change brings a different approach to that platform. And then throughout our relationship with MSU FCU, we've had over $63 million of external loans linked to the platform. So that means MSU FCU has better insights on where this debt lies, their interest rates, uh, their credit uh, on a consistent basis, uh, and has the opportunity to build a journey to their next 
product. So throughout this journey, we've also helped people spend over, or pay off over $2 million in debt and get them to that next financial product 18 months sooner. And we've originally started off our relationship uh, with MSCFCU based off of a case study that we ran uh, within our earlier uh, days of, of our, our pilot. Um, and that pilot and that FICO study was about published about a year and a half ago that stated um, that 86% of consumers felt that they were satisfied with their financial institution, but only 1% felt that they were part of their financial success. So many of your members and consumers are looking at you as that transaction, right? I get to check my checking account balance, use my debit card. As long as those products are functioning properly uh, and I, I'm able to utilize that, like that's that's the ground level set expectations of what consumer ha a consumer or member has today. Now, we need to go above and beyond and to take care of the actual financial burdens, which is debt repayment. So after utilizing the platform, 95% of members felt that MSCFCU is part of their financial success. They are more confident around their debt just because they had that actionable tool, which I'll show you how change works in just a second. And then 72% said so they'd actually recommend uh, MSCFCU more just because they're offering a tool that actually says, hey, this is going to get me to the next level, which all of us are thinking about personally. It's like, how can I, you know, get a get a better raise? How can I pay off this debt so I can start saving for retirement or for my first home? Um, so great results so far through uh, our partnership with MSCFCU. So I'll kick things off uh, in regards to how the experience looks for a push notification to the Q2 marketplace and how we live and breathe uh, within the digital ecosystem of a financial institution. So we'll kick things off with a push notification. So we have that do debt differently. Here's change. Tap to get started. Really kind of the first thing you see when you look at your phone. Uh, next thing we'd launch directly into the marketplace app store. And then via an SSO integration, we plug in right away. So you're establishing your account very, very quickly. And through the first steps is so identifying what that member wants to accomplish. So in this case, my credit cards and auto loans. And through a process we've built called QuickLink, we're able to pull in all of this information with a few short pieces of information that we pull directly from the SSO integration that we have have the ability to pull in all of their debt data where they can view which ones they want to link to the platform. So we'll categorize that uh, by debt type, have the ability for the member to select which debts they want to link to the platform, and then have the ability to select which loans they actually wanna pay off. So in this case, I selected all of my loans. And now I have the ability, where do I wanna target my savings, my payments towards? So through each category, I have the option to choose maybe my the credit card I wanna pay off, the mortgage I wanna pay off, the personal loan, I can target just one specifically if I wanted to. I have the ability to split those savings as well. So if I save $10 today, I can split that among all of my debts if I wanted to accomplish it that way as well. And then through the direct integration accounts link, then the member gets to choose a uh, plan, uh, which MSU offer, MSUFCU offers a free plan as well as a significantly discounted plan for any upgrades if the member chooses to, which they can view all of the benefits of their plans here. And once the plan is selected, that's really it. Their account is created and they're utilizing change, right? So the change platform helps members save in small increments and apply those savings towards that on a regular basis. And the way we do this is by utilizing small budget friendly ways of like rounding up your spare change, uh, what we call savings boosts, which are set or schedule are scheduled or one time transfers that they occur and then they get they help they're held temporarily with change and then automated towards their debt. But every time the member logs in front and center, they get to see how much time and money they're saving on the platform. Visually, both of the numbers and visually, so we sh show a beautiful graph. We link all of their debts into one place so they can see all of their balances based off of debt type, see all of their balances within their accounts, also their uh, savings splits. Um, so really a summary of, of all of their progress throughout the, the, the journey of repayment. And then also track and monitor their credit score and see that progress over time as they repay their loans off. And then in terms of recommendations, recommendations can be short or long-term. So something that a member can take action on today, like scheduling a few dollars today to, to go towards their debt or automating something, or maybe refinancing that debt with a specific product that your financial institution offers. 
Next, we'll go over what a savings boost looks like. And this is where we really manufacture instant gratification. So here I'll set a transfer for $60.87. That's gonna help me save $400 in interest in a few days off of my loan. I have the ability to split that. And I just initiated my first savings boost. Then we can go over our payoff accounts, which in this case, we'll go over a personal loan. As you see this little change scroll, this is where you can track and monitor your savings. So as those small dollar amounts are trickling in to their changed account based off of their roundups or the boosts, they have their little piggy bank. Each time it reaches a payment threshold, in this case, it's $25, a payment will get automated towards their debt. And we'll also uh, inform that member around all of the time and money we're helping that member save. Another great point is we're really shining the light at the end of the tunnel here. So you're expected to pay off this loan uh, on June 21st, 2029. That's four years, 10 months, 29 days sooner. And this is how granular we get based off of the data around the members that how aggressively they're or budget friendly they're saving on the platform and really kind of showing the light at the end of the tunnel in regards to, okay, I'll be able to pay off my loan on X date and be able to execute my next financial goal that much sooner. And then we'll go over just in terms of details of how we show savings, their transactions, all of their savings boosts, all of their roundups based off of the accounts data link, and they can dive into those details and get very granular around their savings, as well as their payments. So they can dive into all of the payments that are set to the platform, how much time and money we're helping that member save specifically, um, the details on what account it went to and when it was issued to that account, so they can track all of the progress there. We also offer other push notifications. That's a highlight marker here is a HELOX rock, a HELOX offer. We can direct members specifically to the resources and bam, they're on the HELOX page for uh, MSUFCU's offer and have the ability to apply online directly through a push notification as well. So just to share a few other points of progress. So. Throughout uh, our relationship and our partnership with MSCFCU, uh, we've done some analyzation as well. So uh, we, we've, we've asked for feedback from members and we found some great results. 78% uh, of their members are utilizing those debit and credit cards more often. I know my debit or credit card at MSCFCU is going to help me make a significant impact towards a larger financial goal. I'm swiping that card more often. We've also seen a tremendous amount of growth, especially with Larky. Uh, seeing an average of 18% month over month growth and helping those members save an average of $946 towards their debt uh, on average, which is, uh, you know, light years ahead of compared to the average consumer. And wrapping up there, we're going to kind of open it up for Q&A. And Jordan, I'll let you take it from there. Yeah, we do. Uh, we did have one question come in um while you were talking and it was related to sharing the the account holders credit data back to the financial institution um and we get this question a lot at q2 as well as if somebody if our you know account holders are using this elsewhere uh, or using your integration through our digital banking platform are we able to get access to that data um yeah and so can you talk a little bit about that of course. Thanks, Jordan. Uh, so we have multiple ways we can share that data, whether it's a raw fee to plug into your own systems or um, through a dashboard that we provide to uh, many of our partners where they can track and analyze all of the progress and be able to pull reports, run their own marketing campaigns based off of that data, or even run campaigns internally within the change experience. Great. All right. I have a question, if I may. Yeah. I know uh, maybe panelists aren't supposed to ask questions, but I, I think it may be it may be interesting, and it's something that I'd like to know. So, Amy, the question's for Amy. So, as the credit union is looking at helping your members and and really guiding them in their financial lives, which in turn creates reduces attrition, creates stickiness, creates additional value for the credit union. What are some of the challenges that you've had in terms of adoption, and and how have you overcome those? And it, it's like. It's somewhat of a loaded question, but I also think it is like like every financial institution that I talk to on a daily, weekly basis is after the latest and greatest in products and services like changed to try to, again, add additional value, break through that sort of commoditized black and white transactional nature of, of banking relationships. 
but sometimes they struggle to get those off the ground. So what, what can you, what type of insight can you share there, Amy? Sure. I think there's a couple of levels to that. So not speaking for everyone, but for some, you know, there are limitations in some of our systems, especially in the world of core that limit what we can and cannot do in accessing or tying data into accounts or activating things. So I will just say, I first of all, think it's very cool that Q2 has a marketplace like this that lets you access these assets and that you know they're available to you because a big lift for a lot of FIs is just even knowing how to access the right partners or what will work within their systems. Um, so I will just say that is half the battle is knowing who you can even work with and how they'll play nice with your systems. Um, but secondarily, it really does allow you to kind of focus in on the members that really need that service. So what we found most success in getting things off the ground is really looking at our membership base and, and looking at what problems they're struggling with or areas that we can improve that they would be that we'd find desirable partners for. So change was kind of a no brainer. We work with a lot of students, everybody to some extent is managing debt at some scale. There is healthy debt, right? There, We live in a world where credit cards are kind of an inescapable necessity, but you can manage that positively. What I appreciated about Change is that they took not only the opportunity to help manage, but teach on debt, but also then moved into, now that you've paid this off, how are we saving? How are we planning? What are we looking at to the future? Um, so finding those partners that really have that foresight is a big lift. Identifying your members' needs and their pain point and then my biggest tip to every FI is always identifying who's going to champion this champion this internally. You can pick up as many partners as you want, but if nobody internally cares and nurtures that relationship, it's frankly not going to get in the hands of your member because you have to have frontline buy-in. You have to have some back office understanding of what the product is doing. Um, and those have been the three most successful things that we've been able to do after we figured out how the tech actually connects. So again, I can't stress that that's a hurdle I get a lot. Um, we, we work with a lot of fintechs. We've got about 20 that we partner with and tech is always the first hurdle. So shout out to Q2 for taking that off of the plate of stressors. And now you can just focus on what your members need um, and what your team can sustain. Um, I did see a question pop into the chat of, does Larky do other fintechs? And you can use Larky to talk about any of your products and services. They are working more closely with fintech partners. So they have some that they've built more robust um, connections with, but you can use it to talk about any feature that you want. And you can also time it and geofence it and create important scales, meaning if you want to use it for alerting your members, like there's a snowstorm or something like that. Um, it's a very flexible platform, but it also does a lot of what Dan demonstrated in terms of driving it all the way through a process as well. So I'm sure Scott has more to add, but I will just share from the credit union perspective, we're using Larky to talk about almost everything um, because we can hyper-focus on the members that need each piece of information. Thanks, Amy. Me, more more to add. I, I'll be brief, I promise. Um, you're right. I think it's about, so one, it's about knowing where to look to find the right solutions that help both your account holders and the, the FI's initiatives. Secondly, pick, figuring out what, what aligns with your goals and initiatives and then having a means to to gain adoption, to communicate it. Like, like I, we always talk to financial institutions that have the best of intentions and put all their resources behind these solutions that really help uh, everyone win-win, right? But um, where they typically fall short is having that means to communicate it out to their audience because again, if people don't know about it, they're not gonna they're not gonna get value out of it. So that initial communication channel that people pay attention to that garners adoption has really been key in getting solutions like change to have in in MSUFC's case 300 plus or 300 percent plus adoption by using the digital channel to let the audience know that this is something that can help them. Um, yeah, and and um, just to expand on the question, does Larky work with other fintechs? I think is what it was, Amy. Um, yeah, I mean, we we loved our buddies at Change, and and we work very closely with them. Uh, but at at our highest level, we're a communication channel. So anything that the financial institution has to communicate, again, whether it be mitigating fraud or driving loans or increasing card activity or increasing adoption of these other really really critical solutions like Change, uh, you're able to use this channel to do just that. That was brief, right? Well, you're going to get more of an opportunity because two more questions came in and they're, um, 
they are related to Lurkey. So I'll, I'll, I'll pose them kind of as a two-part question. Okay. Um, one was around Lurkey's assistance in crafting those messages. And, and really, is there testing involved? Can they do, um, you know, uh, testing to see which message works best? Like, kind of how do you assist with that? Um, or is it all on the, on the financial institution? And then the, the second part of the question is around, around pricing. The question specifically is around how you charge, like is it per notification or per user? Um, so anything related to that that you can share as well. Okay, sure. Thanks, Jordan. Um, let's see, the first part was, does Larky help craft the notifications, I think, right? Yeah, so yeah. It, it, yes, in a couple of different ways. So one, we have many, many financial institutions that we work with. And as a result, we have a ton of best practices. We've seen results like MSUFCUs and many, many others. So we have a good feeling of, of what works through this channel, how to get your audience to respond. Um, and so part of that is working with our team here, working with our client success manager, who you'll work with closely and helping understand your initiatives and then using this really powerful channel to accomplish those. Again, by sharing best practices, uh, by by sharing recommendations and advice, and again, truly understanding what it is that you're trying to do. In addition to that, uh, we have an AI element built into our platform, which is both predictive in nature, which means it's going to look at um, predictive and, and there to evaluate. And so it is looking at all of our previous activity, tens if not hundreds of millions of push notifications that have been sent out through our platform and evaluating those in real time as you're crafting these brief notifications to let you know that this is scoring high or perhaps low and there could be some tweaking. So it looks in real time as to predict how your notification will perform. And then the other part of that is um, the AI element, which is using AI or machine learning to help actually craft notifications. So maybe you're a small financial institution or maybe your teams are just going in a million different directions and you don't have a person that is really, really skilled in crafting this short form communication. You can simply type in whatever it is you're trying to do. In this case, increase change to app adoption. And that can be it. Hit enter and the uh, AI element will, will propose um, five different titles, five different bodies. You can mix and match and it'll create the language for you. So um, sorry, that's not a brief answer, but it is really powerful. And by no means are you um, are you left out on your own to figure this out. Lean on us for best practices and then also use our system that can help you craft these notifications mm -hmm. uh, to make it easy and to make sure they're really relevant. The last thing was um, pricing. Mm -hmm. um, please reach out directly. I'm scott at larky.com. I'll be happy to look at pricing specific to you in the general sense. No, uh, we do not charge per notification. It's a flat monthly fee. The idea is... Um, these are notifications that drive results, that drive income, that drive revenue, that drive stickiness. And we never want you to think about, oh gosh, what does this cost? Should I send this out? So it's a flat monthly fee. The vast, vast majority of our clients see a strong positive return. Uh, but again, reach out to me and I'll, I'll get you specific pricing, but thanks for the question. Yeah, and, yeah. and to add to, to Scott's uh, uh, kind of method in regards to some of the the crafting of messaging and the ease of use. So working with Amy's team specifically, I think every time we mentioned, all right, how to, you know, what kind of, what do we have to put in place to set up a push notification? And, you know, Amy's team members are like, let's just, let's just test some content, right? And Amy mentioned you have to uh, communicate something 20 times. Every time I look at my phone, there's 35 uh, push notifications. Sometimes I have to put that in focus mode, so I don't see any of those. Uh, but sometimes it's good to test different languages and, and change also steps in in regards to how we communicate that. Cause we also have a consumer side of our channel. We know what works in, in, in around describing the repayment, debt payoff savings and whatnot. Um, so we utilize a mixture of both brands and both communications to get the best results there. But I think uh, there's another question in regards to how this change charge per user. Um, so our models are both flexible as well. Um, whether you want to have the costs go directly to the uh, consumer or member itself, um, if you are through the Q2 uh, platform and program uh, to offer marketplace, there's actually a revenue share that's tied with that. So it's a reven revenue generating opportunity, as well as gathering all that data and helping that consumer member get ahead of that lo those loans and really increase uh, you know, a more profitable member, lower debt to income, better credit, 
Um, and then you know what they're focused on through our platform as well. And then if, if the institution does want to pay, uh, it is on a per seat basis. There's a significant uh, discount compared to like our consumer costs and whatnot. Um, and then we can also tier the program. So if you wanted to offer basic uh, plus and premium, depending on those options, MSUFC has a mix of that as well. Uh, happy to, to share more details uh, if you want to go over pricing. Uh, real, real quick, I promise quick on this one. Uh, I think I skipped something. There was a question about testing, Jordan. Um, uh, I'll just share real briefly. Our, our platform allows A-B testing. So maybe you want to test um, a different demographic of your audience group, or maybe you want to test just how messages resonate with or without emojis. Uh, we have a full analytics suite that you can view, uh, again, the results of A-B testing or just the results of, of engagement as a at a high level. Sorry for skipping that. No, no, I, I I threw I think three questions at you at once in the last round. So yeah, it's, it's all good. Um, this next one I I really like because it's it was related to um the integration process and like what does that actually look like? And this is specifically to, for you, Dan. About is there an integration with the core? Um, so. I'd like to touch the integration to digital banking and then you can talk about, is there any outside of digital banking integration, if you don't mind? Um, yeah. So the, the good news is on the Q2 platform, as we've mentioned now, is uh, we've worked with Changed and, and Larky both on, and as well as others, on a pre-integrated solution. So we work directly with the partners to um, you know, certify what that integration will look like, certify that it will work on, on whatever version of Q2 software that you're using. And so because it's it's pre-integrated and approved by Q2, if you are a Q2 customer or financial institution using us, um, I did put a link to that marketplace in the list of partners. Uh, you can request it uh, through, through that uh, channel and really the integration process or the deployment process on our side is, is typically within two weeks, maybe let's say two to four weeks, depending on the solution itself. But it's a very quick turnaround for us to put that inside of uh, the institution's environment. Now, that is for the digital banking side of things. I know, and depending on the partner, there might be other core integrations or things that are outside of digital banking. So I, that's the specific question was asking that to you, Dan, is there any outside of Q2 integrations that are required? Yeah. Uh, so if you're utilizing Q2, no, uh, you place a request. It takes about two weeks for the Q2 team to implement it. Um, we, and then we kind of launch into kind of a testing phase and launch into the specific uh, demographic of customer members that you want to offer change to, which uh, Q2 gives you full control over as well. Uh, it's really easy to implement. We also offer all of our partners a kind of marketing asset playbook right so uh things such as content messaging uh training for your internal teams uh faqs all sorts of different things to really kind of make you as successful as possible as quickly as possible and really to lighten the load or really have no load on your resources internally um, and q2 has done a great job with that uh, to allow us to do that then we're trying to do the same on our end as well to make things really seamless uh, Q2 is not as an option. You should strongly consider them because it's not just change in market. It's on their platform. They have, they have over a hundred different solutions there. And if you want to offer kind of innovative products that capture a, a significant segment of the market with all types of solutions, uh, Q2 is definitely here to check out. But we do have co-branded solutions as well. That's really easy, lightweight, integrated. Um, and then we have the capabilities to integrate with another digital banking vendors too. I think I don't see any other questions that have come in through the chat. So if, if, uh, or through the Q and A, so if anybody else, any of the attendees have any, feel free to put them inside Q and A. Um, but if there's not, while we're waiting, is there any other uh, closing statements from any of the panelists uh, that, that we haven't covered already? Don't tempt me with a good time, I'm Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> No, I I would just first of all thank you for everyone that participated today, and we'll get the recording out to those that were unable to make it. But 
I would just ask that you you think about the the voice of your financial institution and modernize the way that you're communicating to your audience. Uh, look at the way that people interact with those that they do business with, and the answer is digital. So by utilizing that channel, take advantage, like Amy said, take advantage of those fintechs, those offerings that are out there that help you accomplish your initiatives by communicating it in a way that people interact with, that people pay attention to the world. And so think about your current members and customers and your future customers and members and how they interact with the world. Don't ask them to change because they're uh, the, the current traditional channels of communication are waning in effectiveness and they're not going to they're not going to come back. People aren't going to start faxing. They're not going to they're they're likely not even going to pay attention to your email campaigns in, in the coming uh, time period. So don't ask them to change. Meet them where they are. And, um, and and you'll do well. So please reach out. There are, there are resources, but thank you. That That's all I've got. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you. And a big shout out for Q2 as well as MSCFC. You guys have been great partners. And if you ever need a sounding board in, in regards to any type of how to, how to integrate, how to, how to run some of these processes, uh, Amy and Jordan are great resources. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're happy to help. So again, thank you for, for joining. Uh, as Scott mentioned, we'll get the recording out to everybody and uh, enjoy. I think you get about 10 minutes back. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And thank you, panelists. Appreciate the time. Thank, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.